Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Mosaic Podcast. You know, it's been a little while since I've done one of these because I've been caught up in this other thing that I'm doing, which is 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers, which is like just exploded somehow. And so, and I miss these. And so I was so happy when my buddy, Vicki Thomas, uh, and I started to talk with each other again. And I said, hey, you had me on your hit talks. You had me on your hope, inspiration, uh, and uh, honest inner, inner truth talks. And why in the heck aren't you on my podcast? And she said, well, I would love to do that. And so let me tell you a little bit about Vicki. Vicki's background is in finance and business in the corporate world. And also, and she also made her success by being in multiple, a multiple business owner and private property investor. However, she was called to do something more and embarked on a new journey five years ago. Her search for meaning and to live her life mission. She is profoundly grateful for the opportunity she's had to reach out to many through the medium of global live events, talks, books, radio, and soon to be television. She is said to be a guardian angel who not only inspires her followers, but energetically heals people all over the world, utilizing the quantum field. She brings magic and abundance into people's lives. She is a quantum healer and an intuitive guide. She's the founder of Align Your Life with Magic, a container supporting women from a soul level, which you can find on vickithomas.com. She's the founder of Hit Talks, a live global platform for hope, inspiration, and transformation, which is www.hittalks.com, and also the founder of Honest Inner Truths, conversations with interesting people to get to ask each other questions that they have to answer. She's done a lot of things. She's made a lot of pivot points. And you know, the Mosaic podcast is about pivot points and watching and, and bringing to you people that have done great things and then have made pivots so that we can always, always, always know that where we are is not where we have to be if we don't choose to be there in this moment. So it's with an honor and privilege and pleasure that I introduce you to my beautiful friend, Vicki Thomas. Vicki, welcome to the Mosaic podcast. Mm -hmm. Gracias. Thank you so much, Danny, for having me. And wow, did you remember all of that off by heart? Or? <laughs> I, I, ju I just have a mind. <clears throat> this morning, I, I realized I hadn't gotten Vicky's bio. And so I went and searched through all the different places. <clears throat> Boy, it's early in the morning here. So I have a frog in my throat. I haven't been sleeping well, to be honest, lately. And so I've been up a lot. I don't know what this frog in my throat is about, but we're going to get rid of it. Um, so I, I went through some of your different things and, and just tried to piece together something so I didn't look like an absolute <laughs> idiot. And I wanted to make you look like a beautiful, the beautiful being you are. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the amazing introduction. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is who you are. Hey, so in order to get some context as to how you came into this world, I always ask people, what, what did your parents do? Oh, my mum, believe it or not, uh, obviously from being, from being a housewife during the, during the time that I remember is that she was a fruit picker. And so, you know, with a lot of, a lot of mothers when they had uh, children in, you know, in our area, we live in the country, we live in Bulmers. So we live in Herefordshire, which is the Bulmers cider, cider apple place. So she used to she used to pick apples, but I remember something is that um, it was before before I was before I was born, but she was the first ever female woman to work in a male industry of a factory. Wow. So we also have some factories around here, and I I don't know fully, but you know obviously everyone that worked in the factory were men, and her and her um, sister in law were the first two female females ever to be allowed to work in a factory so it was all over the news and all over the papers it just kind of came to me as you said that but <laughs> that's interesting isn't it interesting how times have changed i mean now right i mean what women were allowed to do in those days and what women are we have a long way to go still but what women are allowed to do now it's it's very yeah. interesting and how about your dad what did he do 
Yeah, so I remember my, again with with my, with my dad from the pre previous, obviously from what I can recall, is he used to be a well a mechanic, and he had his own car breaking business. I don't know what you call that in in America, but it's like where you you get all the old cars and you take all the parts parts out of it, and then you sell the parts, and then you have all the beaten up cars. And it was called Bullingham Car Breakers. Wow. So yeah, so that's that's what that's what he used to do. That's the only that's the only kind of um it's the only things I can remember him doing, to be honest. I think he worked in incinerator once, but um yeah, that's that's the kind of recognition that I remember as you as you asked me that question. And why is your memory so sparse of those? Did your parents pass away? Were you not with them early on? I how how what what caused that like my parents both passed away so i have a lot of black bl blank areas of what my where my dad was from i don't even know what what he did but i sort of remember but but it's been a 50 july 4th was 50 years for my mom passing oh, away and okay. 52 years for my dad both of them passed away on the same day so that's that's a huge part of my life and so some of that i've just blocked out but for you, what causes that cloudiness there of, of, of memory? Well, I remember that just to say through during my child, young, younger childhood days, but my parents, from what I rec can recall from my childhood, is that it, was, it wasn't, let's say, easy. Yeah. So there was a lot of um, alcohol, there was a lot of uh, violence, and then, then there, was, there was a divorce. And so the divorce wasn't easy. And, you know, children get caught up in the divorce. And, you know, I was about 10 years of age, maybe a little bit earlier when I think it started, it started off getting quite nasty. And um, I can kind of, I think I energetically blocked that out. Yeah, but then when the, the divorce got even worse and worse, and then my dad disappeared off the scene because of the divorce. And then, when I was 14, my mum had found another boyfriend and then went to live with him and then abandoned me, left me. So it was me and my brother. Oh my so God. My brother, yeah, my brother was seven, I was 14 and we were, we were living in a, in a council house by ourselves when, with, no, with no parenting. And so I was trying to, you know, still get to school, still get back, still trying to look after my little brother and do things. And so it, I think it gave me a lot of strong will. <laughs> yeah, I bet it did. And, and, you know, we know each other a little and maybe, and I didn't have any idea of any of that. And, and it's just so interesting when I ask the question, what did your parents do? It sort of paints a background. And so for the, for the amazing amounts of things that you've done as a, with your life as a, coming from that upbringing, the chances of you doing what you've done with that upbringing are so slim. Most people, many, many people coming through that would have just fallen apart, uh, gone to, you know, not made a, made a life work. How did you get it to, how did you get to the place where you could see that big pivot point where you could see that in your life, experience that in your life, not have the support, you know, you think of your parents as those people who you can love and support and trust. How did you, how did you do it? How did you get to be doing all this, the, going through all the success that you went through? I say that it was something inside of me with, which was like drive and determination. And when I was leaving, I went to a Catholic school and there was a nun that used to look after us, Sister Alice, and she was, she was hideous. <laughs> She was horrible. And um, I remember, so God forgive me. But <laughs> <laughs> me, too. me too for the thoughts that I'm having. <laughs> yeah, but it was just, um, you know, I remember when she was leaving, you know, and I was in, in the final years of school, you know, I didn't go off the rails, but, you know, I got, I got, I was, I was one of these children that was able to get my grades, but then still mess around. Right. Um, so, and it was, um, you know, she, she, when we left, she wasn't very nice. And she said, oh, you'll just come to nothing, Vicky. You'll be pregnant with about six children by the, oh by, by the time you're 17. And, you know, and it's kind of stuck with me. And a lot of the work that I've done has gone back and forgiven and healed that those words. So I say it now with love, but it's, um, it's very much like there's a drive and determination in a, in a way to prove. 
and you know from what I was ev everything that I was doing was like I have to succeed I have to succeed and you know I wanted to have children I wanted to get married that was des you know I was desperate to be to have that path and you know I'm blessed I've got a husband I've been married to for 21 years and I have an 18 year old and a 16 year old but it even in my younger days I was there my path is going to have a successful marriage, have two children, uh, you know, not two children, but have children and make a success of myself. And whatever happens, I'm going to make that happen. Yeah. And, you know, so I kind of had that drive and determination, but from a very masculine perspective. Now, when I look down from the new person that I've become, I was put on this earth for a reason. You know, I chose to be here. I chose to have an, an alcoholic mother that um, that left. I chose to have a father that was abusive, and he's he's, he's in my life now. Everything's forgiven, but at the time, you know. So I'd made that choice, and I'd made that choice to be able to learn from everything that's gone through my life, to you know, to to experience this, so then I can be the the guardian angel for others to to support them in 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 any way, but. Yeah, that in a nutshell, I think. <laughs> yeah, but it makes it makes so much sense now that you would choose to be the guardian angel and identify yourself as the guardian angel that puts her wings around those who work with you to protect them because without your without knowing the piece before of how you were how you were brought up, it made less sense to me. But now it's so understandable knowing that people suffer like that the way they suffer that you know that suffering and you're able to be there to sort of help them through and be there to be the person that you didn't have in your life growing up. And it always plagues me to think that the church, which is the other place that we should find refuge, where we sh where people should be kind and loving and, and gentle and good, are, are filled with so many people that are, that are strict and mean and not, you know, I mean, how is that possible? And I guess it's true in every religion, but it's you see, the caricatures of those of those old nuns and old, especially old nun teachers, who are just nasty and mean. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because you know totally off off um, you know conversation. But I was called after doing one of the hit talks the other night the other night to watch a little bit of TV and chill. And I don't watch TV very often, and so my husband put Netflix on. And the first thing that came up was a warrior nun. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, do you know that in the Mayan calendar today, it's Yellow Warrior Day and we have to watch that. Oh my gosh, Danny, I watched it until two o'clock in the morning, series after series after series. <laughs> and then the following morning, the following day, I was like, we've got to finish it off. <laughs> and it was, it was brilliant. It was again, a bit, a bit about the church and these nuns that have turned into warriors to save people and things. And so oh, wow. it's definitely, definitely worth watching. But as okay. you say that, it's just like, I'm now a warrior nun. <laughs> I, I like that. That's going to be part of your new definition. Um, <laughs> so, so the power and the strength that you felt in some ways was to just show the world that you were other than what they thought they, they were. And you could, and to prove not only to them and to yourself, that you are more than what your cards were dealt. And somehow from what you said is that you understood that you chose that and that you chose to come in for people who find that a little bit of a hard pill to swallow because they don't want to either take responsibility for that or it just doesn't seem fair. What would you say to people that are in situations like that? Because making a statement like I chose I realized that I chose to come in with an, with an alcoholic mother. I chose to come in with an abusive father. Puts, takes away the blame and the victimization of it and takes responsibility for it. But how would you say that to somebody who's going through that situation now who doesn't feel that? Well, I wouldn't have been able to say that myself many, many years ago. It was, you know, it was very much like, oh, you know, I went through this and I went through that. And that's why I've gone off the rails and done this. That's why I've done that. That's why I've jumped from job to job. Um, even though all the jobs and the businesses that I had, you know, majority, I've been very entrepreneurial. You know, my, my family used to say to me, oh, what's Vicky's next whim? She moves from one thing to another thing to another thing. She, you know, she's never committed. She's never settled and all this sort of stuff. Um, in my career and and I, I used to think well okay it's because 
I've always got something to learn. It's the next step. It's something else to put into my toolbox, all these different things. So I wouldn't have been able to say that to myself or to anybody else that are in, is in that situation because they've got to come to that realization themselves. Yeah. What I'm there to do is to hold their space and be there for them and listen to them. And, and, and actually, you know, sometimes it's, you know, not everybody's in the same situation, but life is, you know, life is a journey. Life has its ups and life, life has its downs. And it's just having somebody there to, to trust, to really, you know, cause you sometimes can't, you know, I didn't, you can't have these kind of conversations that you do sometimes with your husband or your wife or your mum or your dad or, or people like that. So it's, it's, be, it's having that safe space with no judgment. There's so many things that I want the listener to just hear in what Vicky's saying. Uh, there's so many things and I was just going to try and highlight a couple of them, but I want you to go back and listen to them for yourself. Because already, if the podcast would end right now, I've gotten more value than I could ever imagine from what she, she said. Because so many times we think our, our lives are dictated by the conditions that we come into. So many times we feel that we're victimized by the life that we have and we stay in that victimized mode. So many times we don't realize there's another perspective that can give us hope and give us inspiration and can transform us, which is why she has hit talks, right? Uh, hope, inspiration, transformation. So many times that it is so easy to place blame on outer situations. And so many times be when we go through those transformations, we, we are born again like and want to tell other people what to do and how to do them. And the gentleness and the ease and the beauty of what Vicky just said of, I couldn't have done that. I couldn't say anything to anybody, but I can't hold the space for people to go through what they go through. Absolutely beautiful. And if, if that's all you hear from this and you'll hear more, I would, I think you've got a lot to, to chew on for, for these days. Yes. What are you most proud of in your life? Me. Me. Tell me. Yeah, me. Do you know? And again, that's a new thing that I've had the confidence to to say because many times it would have been that I I was proud of my husband, which I am, and I'm proud of my children, which I am, and I'm proud of what I've, um, I've achieved, which I am. However, you know, they're things again outside of me, and you know, every single day I'm growing, every single day I'm learning, and every single day. You know, I'm forgiving myself and I'm loving myself more and I'm bringing more, you know, amazing people into my space and I'm, I'm helping people with hope, inspiration, transformation and, and love. And so it's, you know, it's taken me a long time, but for me to actually say that I am actually proud of me. Well, again, underline, underscore, can you as a listening audience make that same statement? asked what you're most proud of can you forego all your accomplishments and can you just be proud of yourself what a beautiful statement to make Thank what do you, you. But, absolutely go no sorry because um in, in some of the interviews and podcasts that i go on people say to me who inspires you and so it's the same it's the same question because we always look outside of ourselves of who who inspires us and then i i look and i say well I, you know, who inspires me? Me. And they're like, what? And I'm saying, because yeah, I, I see other people that are inspirational, but what I see in them that makes me inspired, I have inside of me. Yes. That's, otherwise I wouldn't see it because we're mirrors. So it, you know, it, it all comes down to, it all comes down to us. And as I say, years ago, Danny, I would have said that I was an egotistic and who do I think I am to say things like that? Or people would have said that to me. But when you when you get to a space that you know you know that you, you're you're serving and what you're here for, and it's not from ego, it's purely from heart that you can have the confidence to say that yeah, I inspire me. And you can tell when people are speaking from ego, and you can tell when people are speaking from truth. And I mean, at least I can. And there <laughs> there is no ego in that statement, but just that honest sort of almost gut-wrenching, gut wrenching, real beauty of just being able to go through the battlefield of knowing what you know and being able to now say, boy, I'm really proud of myself. 
when I look back on my life, that this is what, that I'm proud of me, that I did all mm -hmm. these things. What a beautiful place to be. Thank you so much. What are you most scared of? Um, I would say that I'm most scared of not achieving what I was put on this earth to do. Now, again, because of the work that I've done is I honestly know deep down inside my heart, there's a lot of things that I've been put on this earth to do. One is to lead my daughter because my daughter is going to be even more inspiring than me. She's going to be a, 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 a you know, a golden warrior, um, but that's her path anyway. Um, and again, my son, you know, is, is you know, they've, they've got their own journey to take but i'm i'm here to to not mix things up but you know I, I i speak a lot about you know the seven generations past and the future and the next generation so me making shifts and changes in my life then is going to make shifts and changes in their life so for instance all the the programming all the dna structure all the uh, limited beliefs, the barriers and the blockages and things that I've had from my childhood and from my generations past, that it's time for me to actually break those chains and, you know, do the work so it doesn't then ancestrally pa um, pass in the future generations of uh, my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren and, and make that shift. But I also know that I'm here to do so much bigger things in the world and I've always said that, well, I've say now is that I'm going to live to 333. So I still have many, many years ahead of me to actually achieve those things. So um, Eastern teachings also speak about when a person becomes enlightened, they enlighten seven generations behind them and seven generations yes. in front of them. Yes. And, and I, I, I get that you get that. Can you talk a little bit about how that's possible? Because there's some people that get are caught in the time in the timeline and say, how would it be possible to make changes now that would affect that would influence seven generations behind us as well as seven generations in front of us? Can you speak about that at all? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a, there's a story um, and, you know, one thing that I, I, I wrote, I wrote a, uh, a blog about it is that there is a song called I think I might have said it to, to in one of in one of my talks but there's a song called Del Shannon Runaway and it was it was written in the 50s or 60s I was born in the in the mid 70s and I know every single word to that song I've never owned the album and you know and it comes on now and I can sing every single word and never owned the el album so what you know so if you think about it then what's happened is that obviously in my childhood whether or not you know I remember at all it was played and played and played and so it's now in my subconscious and then now I remember every single word a lot of the a, a lot of the what goes on in our in our life is programmed into our subconscious we only use five percent of our brain the 95 percent of our brain is subconscious but there's a, there's also we talk about generations past there's a story that this um this, this friend, friend of mine and she was invited us around for a ham roast so this is you know like pig pig joint ham joint same in america and um as she was um you know, she was cooking it she always cuts the ends off the, the 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 joint and i'm a chef by trade so that's one of the first things that i trained to do was that when i left school was trained to be a chef and i would say they're the most tastiest parts you know the ends so when they you know they're cooked up they're the really tastiest parts why did you cut the ends off? And she says, well, I've got no idea. My mum always used to do it. Wow. And I said, but is there a reasoning? And she says, no, I've got no idea. And I said, well, ask your mum. So anyway, and she, you know, so she came back to me. She said, well, I asked my mum why she cut the ends off. And her mum turned around and says, I've got no idea. My grandmother, you know, my mum used to do it. And her mum was still alive. She was like 96 or something. And I said, well, do us a favour, get find out from your gran. And the reason being is because her gran saucepan was always too small for her to, pit, oh, to fit wow. the joint in and so that... she always used to cut the ends off and so that's something so simple that just comes generations past and so you've just you know and, and again with the quantum field and the energy that we you know that, that we're in um it's just an easier ex an easier example to actually understand that it's really easy for this to flow through and that's good things bad things and and so I I clearly understand that generationally we're handed down in India. <clears throat> they tell a story about a priest who was conducting a ceremony, and and 
what and a dog wandered into the into the holy place where he was uh, conducting the ceremony. So he took a rope and he tied the dog to the tree, so the tree, so the dog wouldn't be on the holy circle of of, of area. And over time, what happened is the ceremony was handed down and handed down to generations. And the people forgot actually what the ceremony was, but they said it seemed like the most important thing was you have to tie a dog to a tree in order to, to get this thing happening. And so I understand that those things, the question I'm sort of asking is, and I don't know if, if I even understand it or if you understand it, how in the, in the quantum field of time, can a change in this moment reverberate back seven generations to change the consciousness of seven generations before us does that do well, not, yeah we're not changing that we can't change the past you know we're, we're 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 in the present so what's happened is the past has actually come into you know in in into our field you know making a break in 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 a lineage is changing the future gotcha. and so in the quantum field you know it's it's how understanding the viewers are as far as the quantum field is is concerned without me getting too much into the science of it but when we when we energetically make a break within the within the quantum field of of, of our our barriers our beliefs then which we're, we're shifting the energetic vortex of what's going in the future generations and um, so again just like small small examples you know when you when you change the way that you speak uh, the change you change the way that you you perhaps do things then if you've got family around you and you've got children for instance and you you know you 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 continually doing it you see the changes in them doing it because you know we we mirror we mirror people Absolutely. and so that so that so really in an, in a without without going too much into the in, into the quantum stuff unless people really understand the quantum is that we're we're, we're shifting the past we're healing the past and this is the work that i do is kind of you know healing you know dis dissolving and you know saying goodbye with love and forgiveness of everything from the past because you know our parents and our grandparents and our great grandparents they did the best that they that, that they could with the tools that they had the knowledge that they had so that you know that they did do the best that they can and you know yes. from the different generations now we have these tools now we have you know the, the the universe has opened up to give us so much more enlightenment and so much more communication skills and you could say that you know the 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 cosmos has given us so much more intelligence that you know we're now in a situation that we can forgive the past and we can use all this intelligence and all this knowledge that we have now to reprogram the future so then it doesn't carry on in one lineage does that make sense tons of sense and and just to qualify it a little bit if it doesn't you tell me if i if i'm understanding it correctly the past represents a lot of weight that we carry around on ourselves and when we can forgive that past and when we can let go of that past it's almost like a rocket dropping the first uh capsule that's got got it to the place in the sky where it can go but then it doesn't need that it's just weight at that point and it drops it midair and and then the, the rocket just takes off further because it's not carrying that weight anymore it feels like that's what you're saying is happening in our lives so that when people can come across someone like you who can release some of those past bondages and burdens and stories and forgive and help them forgive those things, then we're no longer carrying that weight around and we can, and we can soar. The same amount of energy that we put out before doesn't have the burden of the weight that we've been carrying. And so we can go faster, cleaner, easier towards where we're trying to get to. Is that, would that be correct? an absolutely fantastic analogy and it's it's very much as well is that it, it's us taking responsibility so again you know what i say is that i choose i chose this life and whether or not people understand that or not but you know my belief is that you know i chose this life i chose this body so everything that's gone on in the past then i have to take responsibility for so the things that i've done that i'm not proud of the th the situations that i've been in that i'm not proud of the situations that have been challenging you know i've got to give myself love i've got to forgive myself i've got to kind of just be a little bit easier on myself to say Vic, that was just 
you know that happened because that's another it's another lesson it's something to teach you it's part of your journey and now you're aware of it so without awareness you know that's one of the key things i believe is awareness it's being aware of situations and being aware that okay whatever is happening in your environment really is down to you if it's good or it's bad it you know it's down to you and it's being aware of that with love and it's it's the piece that i feel that you bring to the table is it could be that could be a heavy decision because if we when we take responsibility for our life, sometimes we're not proud of what we've done and we can beat ourselves up because we yes. tend to be very hard on ourselves. Yes. But, there's, but there's a choice that we can make in that moment where we can choose now to forgive ourselves, forgive the situation and let go of it. Why do you think people choose the other choice to put themselves down so much and to be so hard on themselves? Why, why do you think we choose that choice rather than the choice of forgiveness? which which frees us up yeah well i chose that choice many times it was very much you know it was always in my environment's fault it was somebody else's fault you know it's so easy to blame others and i think again that is that's programming you know that's very much you know the, the whole of society and generational it's, it's so much easier to blame others when we, we we're not really taught how to take responsibility and you know it, it, it is it's 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 something that you grow into and you, to take responsibility of of yourself take responsibility of your environment and take response because you can't change anybody else you know i can't change my parents i can't change my past the only thing i can do is change me and that's it i can just be responsible for me i can't be responsible for the person driving the car i can't be responsible for what my husband or my children want to do and you know i can be a guide but i can only be responsible for me so let's put that into current affairs right now in america for instance we're going through huge coronavirus numbers increases we're going through protests around equality for race it wasn't long ago that we went through protests around equality for women i mean it's been it's been a fairly tumultuous set of years here right i mean it started with a me too movement maybe where people of people who we always thought were good people were then suddenly accused of treating women disrespectfully now is now we're questioning every single one of us is questioning what what we really believe about race and and how we look at people of other color um and we're also being uh, surrounded by this vi this invisible virus that's isolating many of us and those who are and, and growing amongst us. Talk to me about taking responsibility for our actions within those places, if you can. Yeah, this is like this is like for me opening a can of worms, which in this podcast I don't think is a great thing to get into. You know, I, okay. I do look at I do look at the bigger picture of the world that. I do believe that energetically, a lot of what's going on is here to test us as a, as a race. I do believe that the, the, the race that, you know, the, the, human, the human race at the moment is evolving. And a lot of things that's going on is, is to say, is, is, to, is to test us. We're learning so much from it. You know, we're learning who not to be. We're learning, you know, perhaps maybe, you know, who to be. We're having the time with the coronavirus to actually spend time with family, spend time to, you know, a, a lot of people, especially in my field, they, they're using the, let's say, the p pandemic of this virus to, as, as, a, as a positive. Yes, we have to pivot and turn, turn our businesses online. You know, usually I travel in the world speaking on stages, but you've got to travel, you've got to pivot. And using that time to, you know, to go within, spend time with the children, spend time with your family, spend time with your loved ones, you know, read books, do gardening, do the things like... We, we weren't doing because the way the world was evolving and you know the more that we can spend time in mother nature the more that we can spend time with ourselves the more we can spend our times in the books which loads of people are doing so again it's going back that i personally can't go and change what's going on in the world and again i can change me and so when we come out of this virus this pandemic whatever's going on 
I'm just a brighter light. I'm a stronger person because I've been spending time nurturing myself, nurturing Mother Earth, nurturing my knowledge and my wisdom and my education and my, you know, my body and my being and my vessel. And so it's, 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 it's people's choice. They can, some people might, you know, like to go out there and, and fight with the Black Lives Matter. Some people like to go and do, you know, all the, all these things that that's fine. There's no right and wrong for that person. Yeah. So it's down to an individual choice. I love something that my buddy Wayne Dyer once said, um, that when you change the way you see the world, the world you see changes, yes. right? Yes. And it really just comes down to a matter of numbers. Like we think that our voice doesn't matter and what we do doesn't matter. But when enough of us do what we do, what we know is right, when, we, when enough of us take the time and have the courage to change the way we see our world, the world we will see will change. It will change for us individually and it will change for us collectively. And I agree with you. I think this, these moments are, are tailor-made that coronavirus would come to give us the space to not occupy ourselves with all the busyness. And then Black Lives Matters would come to make us really reevaluate what is it we really believe about color. And because we're all human, you know, we're, we're, whether or not we're, you know, we're, we're black, we're, we're white, you know, blue, you know, yellow like Homer Simpson do you know what I mean it's you know it you know we're, we're, we've all got a soul we've all got a heart and it's you know it's yeah <laughs> I, I see I, I see beyond it all I see it from here yeah I love that and I love the the saying that's sort of become popular now that we're not we're not the black race or the white race we're the human race and we're all yeah. just we're just one race yeah. and so we are what we are just all one l- but again it's everyone's journey Totally. Let's segue a little bit because I know in through conversations that we've had before that there was a part of you that was involved in the business world. And then there was a part of you that made a decision to go into the spiritual world. And there was some space between those. And I just read on your website how it's this beautiful, beautiful place that you're now putting yourself in as being one of the bridges to take people, to join people from those two places together. Can you talk to me about the, tr- the, the pivot point that allowed you to go from business person, spiritual person with no bit, with disregarding business to now bridging those two, sp- two areas? Yeah, it's something that because during my early successes it was very masculine driven I was very much in a male corporate <clears throat> male dominated world and as a, as a woman uh, you know in a in a corporate drive um, climbing the success ladder you know you had to have this like drive and determinations and again proving this but then when I decided to that was it give it all up and sell my businesses close them you know dissolve them you know sometimes with a huge loss but I just wanted to clear I wanted to go to ground zero I wanted to clear everything yeah. And so the, I think it may be in the personality with me, it's all in or not in kind of thing. So then when I went across and done my teaching, I traveled the world and sought out the best coaches and mentors, you know, in the spiritual realm and, you know, doing what I say, say on the woo woo world, you know, I, as you know, we spoke about many people would message me from my business world and say, what are you doing talking about all this woo-woo stuff? Get back to what you know, you know? And, yes. um, and I was like, but we're all spiritual beings. And so I kind of went over that, into that space and behind the scenes, hidden, I was still doing property stuff. I was still, you know, looking after my properties. I was still developing, doing things like that. But I wasn't, I was hiding behind a mask because I thought I had to be this angel that was up there, you know, doing all these things and not doing the, you know, the stuff with the builders and the businesses and all the rest of it. And I always knew, and going back from like years and years back when I, when I used to do my journaling, I always knew that I was the bridge. And to the point that, when I used to see some of my coaches saying that they were the bridge between two worlds, I'd say, I told you that I was the bridge <laughs> thinking there was only one bridge in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and so it was, it, it was a little bit of a, a, a separation. And then we had this conversation and, you know, and you said to me that, you know, you saw the separation in, in, in between the both worlds. I'd already started building my website and the website had, you know, 
a lot of the stuff in there. And, you know, I give credit to you because after, you know, a conversation again, you know, people have told me so many times, but you have to be in the right time for you to actually open your ears and listen and take action on it. And even though many people had said to me, bring the business into the spiritual, bring the spiritual into the business and things. It just wasn't the right time when anybody else told me, but when we had this conversation and you were saying about the separation, um, it like okay well I've just been told again so Vic take bloody action on this um so it was the either say the the, the let's say you know, there's lots and lots of nails that are being hammered in and yeah. then when we had this conversation it was just like bang come on do it <laughs> so yeah. again I thank you uh, I and I didn't even realize that but I appreciate you saying that what an honor uh, and for me I, I often think that sometimes it's the straw that breaks the camel's back and that normally has a negative connotation of meaning that we fall down and we lose. But there's a, that same straw can break the camel's back to lean towards a positive direction. And so I think I was just another piece of straw on a, on, on a haystack that was really ready to move that way. And it could have been me. It could have been anything. But it was just that one little drop of straw that, yeah. that you realized, hey, that I can do this. Something just came to me, which is interesting. Do you think that some of your desire to leave behind that world and make it in a spiritual world came from being a child where people said you couldn't do this and you and and you just wanted to prove to them that you could do this like there seems like in certain in, in, with with the catholic nun that you spoke about and with the with the cards that you were dealt that you that you honestly said you chose to deal yourself which is beautiful but there's this there was this determination to say I'm going to show myself, I'm going to show them that I can do this. Do you think any of that existed for you in the transition from, uh, in the trans, I just had something popped up on my screen in the transition from going from business to going to spirit and that you actually just needed to just say to them, I'm going to show them that I can go from, I can go into the spiritual world and just do that. Or is that just I completely? Think, no, I think there was a, in a in a little way, and i i was I was searching, and I always knew there was something better. And I did sacred medicine medicine ayahuasca about eighteen months ago, and it was it was very profound. Um, I'm not saying it was the most amazing experience because <laughs> yeah, you know terrible. when you when you first do something, but you know something that I would never change ever in my life. It was definitely a pivotal point in my life. Um, but I I was seeking out the the best teachers, and then what? So there was this kind of provingness, I think, as well to start off with, because I okay, I certified to be a quantum healer. I certified with a Hay House to be a an angel tarot card reader. I certified with um, Ho, 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 Pono, Pono. I certified with doing all these different things. And, you know, so I was getting all these certifications of to say, okay, look, I can do this now. I can be a spiritual person. But in, you know, in, in all essence, then again, in the journey, it's like, we're all spiritual beings. And it's, it, it's how, you know, it, it, it's, again, what cards you're dealt and again, what opportunities you take and how you open your doors. Because again, I don't really, you know, we spoke about this in the titles. I've got to have a bio. I've got to have a, a title or something. But the reason that I, you know, when people meet me on stages or meet me around the world and they ask me what I do, I say I'm a galactic unicorn or a guardian angel because it's these titles that I don't want to be defined by. I want to be defined by people feeling my energy for people actually getting to know me or wanting to get to know me. And so having that, let's say provingness coming across to, let's say the spiritual world that was there. But I say that I, I was also became aware of that. And then I just thought again, Vic, this is something that was just a teaching to you. Yeah. Now you know that you have everything that you need to do, that or you need to serve, you need to offer. You have everything inside of you. You just have to have trust and you just have to have faith in the divine, in the universe, in God, whatever the, 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 the title people use. And then when you have that trust and when you have that faith and when you, you are purely just acting from the soul and acting from love, then 
magic does happen. And, you know, years ago, if I actually heard myself now speaking in the future of me sat here saying, yeah, magic will happen if you just trust. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would have locked myself up. <laughs> but so what do you think is, why do you think it takes us so long to convince ourselves of what we already know? Because we have to learn. It's a divine journey. And if somebody had told me what I know now, three years ago, four years, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I may, I wouldn't have been in the right place at the right time gotcha. to, to accept that. And again, in the future, you know, somebody might tell me something today and I'm not ready for that, but they could tell me the same thing in a month's time, a week's time. And then I'm ready for that because we're all on our own journey. And this is the thing it's having, you know, we always look up to gurus. Um, we always look up to people and think, Oh, I want to do that. Oh, they're doing amazing. They're doing amazing. That's their time in their journey. It, yeah. it, it's, it, it's not for us to have compar comparisonitis, which is the word that I made up, for us to con continue compare of what they're doing because it's our journey for us to enjoy. And when, when we're grateful for where we are, we're grateful for the journey that we're on, we're grateful for the surroundings, we're grateful for the past that we've had, however good or have, however bad it would be, and we look forward to the future, then... You know, I don't know what else there is. <laughs> I love it. What's one thing that you've been really surprised with in the work that you're doing? The changes in the ladies that I work with uh, for getting, not getting them, but supporting them to trust. Because from a female perspective, not from everybody, I'm just talking for myself and I'm talking from a lot of people around us. It's quite hard for us to trust because so, we're so worried about being judged. We're so worried about what people think about us. And, you know, I'm sure it's the same for, 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 for men as well, but it's, it's, it's having that outside influence, in, influences and a lot about judgment. And so that's something is really, really seeing the shift of how they can trust themselves and how they can trust that it doesn't really matter what other people think of us. It's what we think of ourselves. It's how we love ourselves. It's how we forgive ourselves because we're not taught to love ourselves because if we would, you know, we used to say, Oh, you love yourself. Who do you think you are? Oh, look at her. Oh my gosh. Who does she think she is? You know, all these things and social media doesn't help where you've got all these pristine women and men that look absolutely fantastic. And they've got the life on love Island and, and all these amazing um, reality TVs, which is not really reality, which doesn't really serve our, our, our younger generation. Yes. Yeah, well, it's, and very few people show the other side of their life, which has also exists at the same time on that same social media. They only show exactly. the, you know, the, yeah. um, yeah. is there something I should have asked you that you want to say that I haven't asked you yet that you now have the platform to say whatever it is you would like to say? No, I'm just, you know, I'm blessed for the conversation. I'm blessed for the connection and no, I just, I, I believe that people that are going to watch this podcast uh, are directed to it for a reason because everything happens for a reason. People watch things right the way through for a reason or they stop and start it, it, it a perfect reason. And, you know, if this, if, if this conversation that we've, we've had can give any hope or inspiration or transformation to anybody out there, then, you know, great. And just know that everybody that's watching this and to believe that they really, really, really do have it all inside of themselves and they really do, sorry, they really are able to love themselves and to do exactly what they want to do. I love it. My final question, for, I want to, and then I'll get your data, how people can get in touch with you and reach you and all that will be in the show notes. But I close every podcast by asking this question. When you look out into the world today at the world that is, is this the world you always dreamed of handing over to your children and your children's children? No. So we know around the idea of momentum that as the longer we let something go, the more it builds momentum. And then it, it becomes harder to stand in the force of that momentum because we're not only changing it, we're changing now a force that has been generated by it. What's one thing that you might recommend to people right now that someone could do today and continue to do every day that might 
switch that momentum or halt that momentum or reverse that momentum so that in five years, one year, six months, when we ask the question to another person, is this the world that you would like to hand to your children and your children's children? They might unequivocally say yes. It all starts with us. So I would say that the more that we as a collective can believe in ourselves, can love ourselves, can forgive ourselves and be grateful for what we've got, then that's what I would say. Beautiful. Vicky, I'm sure people are going to want to get in touch with you and we'll put most of your con all your contact information in, but what's the surefire way to get in touch with Vicki Thomas for people who want to either work with you or, or learn more about what you're doing? What's the best way for them to reach you? Well, I use um, Facebook more than anything else, which is Vicki Thomas, B-I-K-K-I. So yeah, my name is totally different. I remember at school crying because people used to spell my name wrong all the time. <laughs> V-I-C-K-I or V-I-C-K-Y. Um, but um, yeah, they can, you know, I, I'm searchable. So it's the B-I-K-K-I and Hit Talks is another way. So I would urge anybody, it's a free platform for people. You know, you've been an absolutely amazing guest on there and we've had our Honest Inner Truth conversations, which um, people are loving as well as that um yeah the details are down below and yeah i'm i i i i'm i'm a, I'm a free bird out there <laughs> i love that and so all of those will be in the show notes and and you'll be able to contact her i would like to just take one minute or two minutes to summarize um what a treat to have people like this in the world and it's even made more of a treat because the circumstances upon which they entered the world were not with a silver spoon in their mouth. What a treat to hear somebody own up and take responsibility and say, this was my creation. The moment I realized that I wrote the script to the movie that I'm starring in, or I wrote the book that I am a part of, that moment changes everything in the world that you see because Look at the beauty of what happens when no longer does Vicky blame the world around her. It'd be so easy to blame the mom and to blame the father. And you go through, I'm sure she went through stages, years of that or days of that or months of that. But then to own that space to say, no, this is the way I wrote it. And I wrote it for a reason. And that reason sets the stage for the work that I'm about to do with other people so that I can understand them, so that I can feel them, so that I can be that guardian angel that surrounds them with the wings of protection and hope and inspiration and trust, so that nobody has to walk through the life that I had to walk through without knowing somebody is there watching over them, caring for them, giving them the space to grow in their own space, to do what they have to do and inspiring them to know that there's always some, somebody here because she didn't grow up with that. So what a beautiful example of a life lived when someone who never had that can become the beacon of hope for others who don't have it as well. And she can make a, a line in the sand to say that if you feel this way and you need somebody to comfort you, if you need somebody to watch over you, if you need the guardian angel wings to surround you, I'm here for you. Just come to me. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the work that you do, for the being that you are, for the beauty that you've created through Hit Talks and through your conversations of hope and inner truth discussions. Um, I'm, it's my honor to know you, Vicki Thomas, and I thank you oh, for being here you. with us. No, thank you so much for having me. So it's it's a, it's a blessing to be connected, Absolutely. and the universe the universe connect people for a reason. The universe delivers for a reason. Absolutely. For those of you who watch and listen to this podcast, thank you so much for being here, for giving us your time and listening. Um, share it with your friends. This talk in particular share it around let people know it if you feel to give it a give it a rating on itunes um, write a review of it 
and please share it around with people, okay? Thank you so much again for your time. God bless you. And until next Mosaic podcast, um, stay connected, okay? Ciao.